we'll begin looking at Tiger 2020 Pro, its directory, and what integration does with your directory. Why is the directory so important? So in Tiger 2020, it requires a directory to allow users to generate reports based upon hierarchies and users. If an extension is not assigned to a view and a report is run against it, that extension will be categorized as an unallocated extension. This can be enabled when generating reports to see how much calls or money or duration has been assigned to all those extension numbers that have not been allocated in the view. So we have two options to maintain the Tiger 2020 directory. We can manually maintain the directory. This means that any moves, changes, modifications will have to be undertaken by a Tiger user, assuming you have the rights to do so. But if required, we can do a one-off import to create that base view for you. So if you have a CSV file that contains the information, we could do a one-off import for you and you can then start manually maintaining from that point. The other option is directory integration. Directory integration will synchronize on a set time and update your directory. So what this will do is add any new users you add to your source directory. It will add any extensions that have been added to your source directory and do any moves and changes that may have been done in your source directory. For example, if someone changes their name or moves departments, then we will automatically move that information in your view and we will create history about that. There is a way that we will go through as part of this session on how to do a manual refresh of directory integration. So why do we have multiple views and what purpose do they serve? By having multiple views within Tiger 2020, it allows you to run reports based upon different hierarchies. Each business will have different tasks and different objectives when running reports. So it may be that when the finance team comes to you and asks for a report, they may want to see their report based upon cost centers. So all they require in their report is to see cost center code and how much that cost center has spent and how long they've been on the phone for. Whereas a sales manager may come to you and say, right, I require a report on all my sales teams, including the locations, the department and the sub departments. So what you could do is you can separate these two onto two separate views one that just has cost centers, users and extensions, and the other one, the other view, which will have locations, departments, sub departments, users, and their extensions. You can also have two separate views. So you could have one view that is manual and one view which is directory integrated. So if you are looking to manually update one and have a directory integrated view, that is also possible. They will be completely independently controlled from each other also. Just a note, on every Tiger 2020 Pro install, you have two views set up. You have the physical view and you have the classic costing view. So the physical view shows you all your switches, extensions. These will be your physical extensions that have been learned and trunks connected to the system. There is normally very little hierarchy. It should be just simply switch, extension numbers, trunks, etc. under here. Note though, trunks will not appear anywhere else in any other view. They will only appear under the physical view. Then we have the classic costing view, which is the only other view where the PBX will appear. So in all the other views you create, you cannot put the PBX as a level in. It's only available in the classic costing view. So if I create my own custom view within Tiger 2020, I can't have the PBX as a level in there. I could create a fictitious level and make that level be the PBX, but you can't physically put the PBX as a level in any other view apart from classic costing. So let's now discuss how Tiger directory integration works. So this is an additional module that you can discuss with your account manager if you don't have this. But what Tiger integration does is it connects to a data source of information which contains information for things like departments, extensions, and users. So this is a master source that the business will maintain and Tiger will build up a view from this source. So rather than having to update Tiger and then going into another source and updating that source as well, you can have your master source that you update in one place and then it will reflect all the changes into Tiger 2020. Trunks and trunk groups will still need to be manually maintained. We can't integrate these. 
So what data sources does Tiger support? We support ODBC, LDAP, Active Directory, Active Directory Forest, Flat File, Cisco AXL, MSSQL, ACWIN, Postgres, and XML. What we would need though is some form of query that would allow us to get the information out from your data source. But just to note, it's not possible to merge data, i.e. I can't get a username from Active Directory and an extension number from MSSQL Server and merge the two together to create one record. That isn't possible with Tiger integration. But what you can do is you can integrate to multiple sources. So for example, your Active Directory will contain all of your people, but it doesn't contain things like lift phones and common area phones. So as long as the flat file has the same hierarchy structure as your data source, you can put the two together to create the hierarchy, but it won't blend information together. So why would we manually maintain the directory? So if you don't have directory integration, you will need to update your Tiger view. If you do not update or populate the view, the reports that require hierarchy will only reflect what the view is configured at the moment. This means users' departments, views, nodes, and extensions will have to be manually created. Modifications, deletions will be manually undertaken by the Tiger users. When we make changes though, you'll notice that there'll be two options when we either edit an option or update an option. You'll have an update button and a correction button. What is the difference between the update button and the correction button? So the update button will change the entry without making a historical change. So this means that when I click update, if I've changed someone's name on the extension number and I want it to be stamped in history to say that from this point backwards, it was owned by this person, this point going forward, it was owned by the new person, I would use the update button. If I've made a spelling mistake or I want to correct something I've made a mistake on, I will use the correction button. Note, if you have done an update and it should have been done two weeks ago, there is also the option to roll back that change if required. And that will be a big part of what we'll be covering off in today's webinar. So what is history and why is it required? So in this example here, we have a visual example of Kate Fuller. So Kate Fuller at the moment belonged in Silversmith and was in the Silversmith department in January up until January the 29th. So any calls that Kate Fuller made on this extension number will appear against Silversmith. On the 29th of January, Kate Fuller was then moved into Cardiographer and any calls now Kate Fuller makes will be assigned against Cardiographer past the 29th onwards. Now, if I run a report for January and February, Kate Fuller will appear twice in my report under the same extension number, but all the calls that she made in January would be assigned to Silversmith and any calls that she makes past the 29th of January will be assigned to Cardiographer. If Kate was meant to be in Cardiographer on the 15th of January, we can manually go into the directory and roll back Kate if we wish to, to say actually she started in that department on the 15th and all calls from the 15th should be now assigned to Cardiographer and not Silversmith. Note there is also an option to delete all history out of the system if required. And again, we will cover that as part of the webinar this morning. So for now, let's go and begin and look at Tiger 2020. So the first thing we're gonna look at is once you've logged into your application, we're gonna go into directory and definition. In here is where all changes are made to your directory. As I said, you may have multiple views available to you, physical, and classic costing, everyone will have as long as you have rights to see them. And then you can create custom views here by clicking on the create new view button and giving the view a name. What you can also do is when you create these views, you can also give the levels within the directory a description here, or you can add additional levels if four levels aren't gonna be enough for your view that you're creating. So to create a new view, let's call one called test. And this will then create a new view. And from here, we now have the ability to manually create a view if we wish to. Again, as I said, we can import a view as a one-off for you that you can then manually maintain. So if I come in here to add, I can now add a group. 
I can give this group a name. And I can also change my icons if I wish to in here as well. This will then start creating the hierarchy for me. So underneath training, I could add another group and we can give it a different icon and we can call this group test. And you'll see it will start building up a structure here underneath each level. So if I call the last group here sales, once I've got to my root item, what I can now do is I can add a user or an extension. So if I want to have users first, I can click add user and fill in the first and last name of that user and the title if you want to. I click OK. And then I can add an extension number to there. And then I can choose from my drop down list all of the extension numbers that are available to me. If I want to move an extension number between people, I can do this simply by dragging and dropping the user between the extension between the user by drag and drop here. If I want to move a person, I can simply drag and drop as well into different department levels. Each time that you do this, it will create history for that item. And to show the history of that item, if you right click on the item and click show history, it will show you the path where they've taken. Now, because we've done this over such a short amount of time, it won't be very obvious in the graph here, but you'll see that it's test has moved into different departments. So again, if I move test back under training, you could add it under there and it will create more history for you. You can also cut copy and paste items between views as well if you wish to. To delete items, highlight the item you'd like to delete and click delete. Or you can click the level above it and in the selection over here on the right, you can multi-select, you can delete, you can cut, paste, or you can move multiple items as well. So I'm just gonna to go to a view that I created earlier just to go through history. If you would like to go and look at how your view looked at in the past, you can change the date on your view by coming into your calendar and selecting the date and coming in and seeing how your view looked on that particular day. So if you wanted to find out who owned an extension on a particular day, you can use your calendar and you can come back to the day you wanted to find out who owned it. And you do a search in there for either an extension or a name. So if I do a search in the name Paul here, I can see that on the 1st of January, Daniel Paul owned that extension and he was under Silversmiths. You also have the ability to show a timeline so you can go back in and out of your past by using the timeline slider here as well to go back into the past. So you would use this if you were looking to see who owned a phone, which department the user was in, in the past. Once you've found all your information, you click on the display latest view and it will take you back to how your view is currently configured. To search for people within the view, click on the search item here and you'll be able to search for either all items that contain a word or you can look for specific items in here as well. How do we change history within Tiger 2020? So let's say that this person here, Toby, was meant to be in Silversmiths. He's in the wrong department and he should have been in that department since the 1st of January this year. So what we can do is I can go, right, let's move Toby into Silversmiths. And now when I go and find Toby here and I look at Silversmiths, it says now because I've dragged him, all of his calls made from the 8th of May at 1219 will now be assigned to Silversmiths. Well, that's not correct. Actually, what I wanted those calls to be was to be assigned from the 1st of January this year. So what I can do is I can highlight this item. 
Again, you can multi-select if you want to do more than one item, or you can choose the level above. So we can select that item and we can change its date and time. So what I wanna do is now click on the change from date and time. It will now come up with a wizard allowing me to change the date and time. What I can do is if I click on the automatically roll back child items, anything that's below the level that I've selected will automatically get rolled back also. So if I select the top level and tick the box, everything below it will change. If I choose gold medal and tick the box, everything below gold medal will be changed and so on. So in here, because I've selected the extension number, I also want to roll back Toby. So I wanna roll back all my child items. What date do I want to roll it back to? Well, he started in that department on the 1st of January, and we can say he started at midnight on that day. Once I've done that, it's going to say, right, you are going to change the item back to this date. So what you need to do then is check the box and click the change option. In this instance, if it doesn't happen, what you'll need to do is go and check in the physical view. And under the physical view here, you'll need to make sure that your extension number is rolled back to a date here as well. So it may be that you may need to roll back all of the extensions under here. Again, by coming in, right clicking on your extension group, automatically rolling back all the child items, and setting it back into the past. Once all of your extensions are available to then roll back, you will then need to come back into your view again, and you'll be able to roll the extension number back in time. As I said, you can do this on multiple items. You can also do it on higher levels and roll back the information below that level if required. If at any point you want to clear all history, be warned by doing this, you will remove all history from the system, but there is also the option to purge old directory data. So what this will do is allow you to follow a wizard. You can say which view you want to clear all history from. So I can say, right, I only want to clear history on the, the demo view or the test view that I created. You can say, how much data do you want to remove? So I could say, I don't really want to keep all history for anything longer than a year ago, six months ago, three months ago, or all history from today. And you can delete the history then by then ticking the box and clicking delete. And that will remove any history from that view at that point. As I said, you don't need to do that, but there is the option there if you want to. The other thing you can do is, if there was a mistake made and you want to go back in time to make the directory look as it was, so if that change to Toby was a mistake and I didn't want to make that, what I could do is I could go, right, actually, let's go back to tomorrow where Toby was in his right place there. And what I can do is I can then roll back my directory to that date and time. So I can go, right, let's roll back all my directory to that date and time. So when I look at it now, Toby was back where he was originally. So all it will do then is just roll back my history so I'm back to as it was yesterday. So if somebody's come in and made loads of changes or let's say you added information in your directory integration and it was a mistake, you can roll back if you wish to to a specific date in time. The next thing that we need to look at is what if there are extension numbers missing from this view? How do we find out that we've got all of our extension numbers in our view here? So within Tiger 2020, under the reporting option, what you can do is you can run under the management you have the unknown extension reports. And what you can then do is choose your 
view here to run against that report to see which extension numbers are missing from that particular view. So to do this, I click the demo view. I filter on some calls here. I run the unknown extension report to find out which extension numbers aren't in my view. So I have two extension numbers which aren't in my view. So if I was to run a departmental cost summary report, for example, these two extension numbers would not be assigned to a department. So for example, here, I've got a user that's generated two and a half thousand pounds worth of calls. So I'd like to assign that to a user. So it comes in my report. Because again, I can come into my departmental cost summary report and see that as well. So if I generate my departmental cost summary report, there is an option to include unallocated extensions and that will then appear at the bottom of your report to show that these unallocated extensions have generated this amount of cost. So if I click on there, I can see that I've got £2,579 worth of calls that haven't been assigned. So I need to assign these extension numbers to a department and then I need to backdate them so that they appear on my report. So at the moment, say this £2,000 has not been assigned. So let's go ahead. Let's assign these extensions into my directory and let's backdate them. So again, I will come into my directory. I will go to the department level I want to assign them to. I will add the extension. And if I want to add extension, which is the other extension, which ends in 2.4. you will see there. I now have to say, right, I ran my report, but they weren't included. So I need to backdate my extension. So I'll come into here, I'll select my items. I will change its date and time for those items. I will roll back all the child items. I will set the date for this to be first, 2010. I want to change all the items to roll back to there. And I click change. So now I'm not going to change anything in my report. So apart from by closing it, using the same calls as I did before. So using filtered on the same calls, same report. Same view. When I now click generate, I won't have that line of unallocated extension numbers. So before, where I had include unallocated extensions, I don't have any unallocated extensions now at the bottom. There are none in here. And that two and a half thousand pounds that was missing from my report has now been successfully assigned here for Kate Fuller. And I didn't add a name under this extension number, but that two and a half thousand pound has been now assigned to apparel workers. So that's how you can find out how who hasn't been assigned in your directory and how to assign them to your directory. If you're using directory integration, Rather than manually adding them in like I just did there, what you'll need to do is add them into your source and then update your directory by doing a directory integration refresh. So how do we do this? So I've gone into my source data, I've made my changes, I've added all my extensions, I've added my users, etc. I now want to do a force update of my directory to reflect the changes I've made in my source. So to do this, you'll need to go onto the Tiger server. You'll need to go to the drive where the 
Tiger 2020 is installed. Within the Tiger 2020 directory, there will be a application called Tiger DI tray icon. If we double click on this, it will then open up a Tiger eye in the bottom right hand corner here. What you'll then need to do is right click on the Tiger eye and go to configure integration. What you'll then need to do is choose which view that you want to do a refresh on. And then you would click the refresh button here to update any changes that you've made in your source directory. So again, if I've added new users into my source or I've made changes and I wanna do a force update, this is where I come to do a force update. If not, directory integration should be running daily. And therefore, if you do want to wait until the next day, the next day when you come in, all changes that you've made in your source data should be reflected within your directory. That's how we add users and so on in here. So I'm just gonna go back to our directory and cover off some last few things within our physical view. So within our physical view within Tiger 2020, we have our switch, we have our extension numbers. So these are all of the physical extension numbers that we've learned over time. And you'll have your trunk group. In here, under your trunk groups will be all of your trunk groups that Tiger have automatically learned. If you would like to configure your trunk groups, you can come into here, you can right click and go to your properties, and you can set the properties of your trunk groups. So you can set things like descriptions, how many members that trunk group has, the type of line it is, where it's located, the tariff that's assigned to it, and the IP address, etc. in here. The other thing that you can do is you can assign configurable fields to these items. So if you want to add descriptions or extra information about these trunk groups, you can enable what's called configurable fields. To do this, simply click on the options and go to configurable fields. You can then come in here and choose which items you would like to enable. So I can go to trunk group and I could call this provider. I could call this line type. And I could come in here and maybe say account manager. Now I can do this for any one of my fields. So I could do it on my switch, on my user, on my extension. You can create any of these custom fields. So when you then go into that item and go into the properties, you can now come in here and fill in these boxes with the custom information. So if you do want to use this as a master database, this information can be input manually from here. You can also put memos on these boxes. And again, before you make any changes, you have an update button or a correction. As I said, if you click update, it will create a new timeline for that option. So any calls that have been made prior to it would be assigned with the old information and any new changes you've made will be added in that report under the new information. Or if it's just a mistake or you want to correct an item, you just click the correction button. Finally, and the last thing in here that you can do is you can set up fixed charges within Tiger 2020. So let's say I want to assign a fixed charge to all of my phones in my directory. So I wanna charge everyone five pound a month for having a phone. I can do this by going into my options and go into my configure and go into my handset types. In here, I can either change my default handset, which will be assigned to everyone. So I can now say I wanna charge everybody five pound per calendar month for having a handset. Or I can create a new one and I could say IP phone. And we could say that that is two pound 50 per calendar month. Or I could create a new one and say USB headset. And that 
we can say is one pound per calendar month. Once I've got these here, once I've created my handset types, I can then go onto my extensions in my physical view under here. And I can say that this phone here You should be able to go into here, go onto properties, and you should be able to change then the handset type that's assigned to them here. So once you've changed your handset, you'll see that the cost for that handset will change based upon which handset you've changed. Because I've set everybody the default one, which is assigned to everybody, we have a five pound per calendar month. When I run my departmental cost summary report now, this department will then pick up five pound per calendar month, each extension number assigned under that directory level. If you are not seeing fixed charges in your reports, you must go into your report configuration in your reporting screen. And under your departmental cost here, include fixed cost charges, you must enable this. And then you've got some additional options here, but making sure include fixed cost is enabled must be on there. So now when you run your departmental cost summary report, you will now get fixed charges for those items. So if I go across now, I can see here now, everybody's picking up default handset charges of five pound. If I was to run this though, against a different view, so all I've done is change the view here, not change the data, not change the report. You'll see I'll get a very different output because I don't have any users set up in my test view. You'll see that my view here is very blank because there's no information in there. But I could turn on my unallocated and show all my unallocated extensions here. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn about Tiger 2020 and its other features, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.